to have ever been named both player of the year and rookie of the year, Mike Albee. The winner advances to challenge our third seeded qualifier, holder of nine national titles and a sparkling 31 and 17 career television championship round record, Steve Hoskins. In that number two position, performing well on both the national and senior tours, 14 titles and a member of the PBA Hall of Fame, Johnny Petraglia and our leader looking for his first win, which would qualify him for the upcoming Brunswick World Tournament of Champions. He averaged 240 this week. Dave Watka. Well, since 1985, the Pro Bowlers Tour paid a visit, uh, has paid a visit here to Taylor, Michigan. Tonight from Taylor Lane, the Greater Detroit Open. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Ferguson, along with my broadcast partner, PBA Hall of Famer Marshall Holman. And Marshall, some veterans in this field. And then you have a young kid on top looking for his very first win. Well, we'll see a couple of those veterans starting out in the first game. John Gant, part-time player, but uh, boy, when he comes out here, he sure bowls good. And there's the power of John Gant. Just a strength player. Watch the ball come into the pocket. Five pin goes to the sideboard. Bang, here comes the messenger. Three pound, 10 ounce Brunswick Pro Pins. Had a little chance as Mike Albee gets ready for his first shot on lane 40. From Indianapolis. <laughs> Not as fortunate, however, he could have left the 7-10. Well, similar shots for both Albie and, and Gant. Mike's ball making that charge, also a left-hander coming in from the right, from the left-hand side. Seven pin falls out, but the 10 pin, the 10 pin just will not respond. Five pin sort of a little lazy getting over towards the 10. Good spare shooter, shouldn't have any problem picking this up. You called it, so Mike Albee with a spare in the opening frame, and John Gant with a strike. Albee, a member of the PBA Hall of Fame, inducted in uh, 1996, and he averaged on this TV pair 262 for four games. Scores are high this week. Well, the scores are really high, but you know, Phil, it really, it doesn't really matter whether the scores are high or low. You're trying to, to just best your competition. If it takes 240s to win, fine. If it takes two O's, that's okay, too. This week, high scores. Rotation ball, rotation on that shot, and a big strike for Albee in the second frame. Well, the main difference between Mike Albee and John Gant is the speed in which they throw their balls. Gant likes to throw the ball hard with a lot of, lot of good, firm roll. Albee, the slower speed. Uh, a little high and just leaves the six pin. Gant, once again, a part-time player over the last... Uh, couple of years has finished this year 11th in Canada where that was last week so he has been bowling very well however last night lost the last four matches hung on to make the telecast and each of the players have a strike and a spare Lane 39 yielding all strikes and 40 so far to a couple of spares John Gant, you get that power player, averaged just 239 this week on the television pair. Now it's a 7-10 in that third frame. Well, ball was right off his hand, did not get the proper release. Leaves himself with a 7-10. Ball just was right off his hand, did not get the ball down the lane. Yeah, he gets the four pin to, six pin to fall, but the 7-10 stands. All he can do is try and bounce it out, takes the count, and he goes down by 13 pins. And I've always said, excuse me, Phil, I've always said that Mike Albee was the most opportunistic player on the Pro Bowlers Tour. 
when he gets a chance to put the hurt on his opposition, he does it. I really think he'll strike here to take a 23-pin lead. Boy, he did everything but strike. Solid eight ball drives right past the eight pin. This is just a, this This really is, is a, a product of the strong bowling balls that are out on tour today. The solid eight where the ball just has no respect for the three pound, 10 ounce boy, just drives right through him. Aubie left the 10 pin in the first frame and now the uh, eight pin, he hung around the uh, top seven all week long. No problem with the spare in the third frame. You know he's not feeling very lucky right now. Albie will not show a lot of emotion uh, as to whether he, he likes, his, likes the shot or doesn't like the shot. As you can see, the 13-pin lead for, for Mike Albie. But uh, I guarantee you, he's, he's a little frustrated with that last result. Not the shot, the result. We definitely have a gentleman that shows a lot of emotion out on the lane. Steve Hoskins coming up in our next match. Mike Albie now up in the fourth frame. More speed. Ball came in light. You know, you sometimes you make a subconscious adjustment for for the shot on the other lane. On lane 40, he leaves a solid eight. He wants to make sure the ball gets down the lane far enough on lane 39, squirts the ball off his hand with a little extra speed, and the ball doesn't quite get up to the pocket. Spare leaves, ball. Leaves the uh, seven pin. That is a spare ball. That's a polyester ball. Doesn't have a lot of friction. And he picked up that seven pin spare, no problem with that ball. So Mike Albee, spare strike and a couple of spares. However, he is on top by 12 pins over John Gant here in the Greater Detroit Open. And we're back here in Taylor, Michigan. John Gant with some work to do. He trails by 12 pins heading into the fourth frame. Setting it right in there. Gant, a big strike in the fourth. Yeah, maybe a chance to collect his thoughts. John was sitting for a couple of minutes, and uh, well, this is this is the lane he needs to needs to get honed in on lane 39. Get that first double. So you can see Gant, very very consistent. Never lower than well, he finished fifth. That was as low as he got the entire entire tournament. <laughs> Double for Gant. Boy, he doesn't take much time once he gets up on the approach. It's almost like he's set and go. Well, he knows what he wants to do. Doesn't take a lot of time, as you said, Phil. This ball's going to come in from the left-hand side, just race back. That's the shot that he wants to hit there. He wants to use that power. Doesn't show a lot of emotion, but trust me, he was very pleased with that. Albie, just perfect in the fifth frame. Mike Albee trying to rev his engine right now, looking for a double. He likes it as well he should. Anytime you see Mike starting to run it out a little bit early, you know he liked the way it came off his hand. Leads back up to 12. Gant gets set, fingers in, thumb in. Now, let's go. Boy, that's a powerful ball. He's got three in a row. And I like that. I like the fact that he gets himself set and just goes. You know, the more people aim, the more time they take. I, I really feel that it can be a detriment to you. You just, you know, Earl Anthony, I'm sure you yep. probably remember that name. Mm -hmm. Put the ball in his hand, started his approach. Yeah, he said if you're not, uh, don't know what you're doing before you get on the approach. <laughs> yeah. You know. You're not going to figure it out standing there. Good point. Gant with four in a row. Oh, we got a match here in the Greater Detroit Open. Gant and Albee strike it. Albee down by eight. And Mike Albee is up now in the seventh frame, working on a double high finish for Mike this year, fifth in the Brunswick Pro Source Open. Lost to Rick Lawrence, and Rick went on to win that tournament. One of uh, several first-time winners on the Pro Bowlers Tour. In fact, we've had to six so far this year. Dave Watka looking to make it seven. <laughs> it back. 
back and kicks out the seven pin. Marshall, he finishes pretty far from the foul line. Well, he does. He gets that, and that gives his ball an opportunity to catch a little more roll. You see it going down the lane. It'll just barely touch the floor into the seven, and Alby absolutely loves it. Two pin advantage for Alby up in the eight frame. I'm sure his wife, Tammy, watching at home, along with CJ, Danielle. CJ loves hockey. Right before he threw the ball. Something distracted Mike. And I know what it was. Yeah, they, they asked they asked the people to, to you know to, to have a good time, make some noise, root for the people, but when the guy is actually throwing the ball, they want it quiet. As Mike throws this ball on lane 39, right when he gets to the release point, noise. And it distracted him. Ball comes in light, leaves a three the nine. Difficult spare. Yes, he needs to make sure the ball carries both the three and into the ninth pin. To stay in the match, and he does it in the eighth frame. You've been distracted a few times. Yeah, but I was, I was never that polite about it. <laughs> you almost you went over to some of the fans and just told them. John Gann up in the eighth frame. He's working on four in a row. That's high. Never did project the ball down the lane, leaps the four, the six, and the eight pin. The ball's going to cut right through the heart of the pin spill. It really had no chance off his hand. He takes the count. The match was even going into that frame, and right now with Mike Alby sitting on the bench, leads up to 15. Through eight frames, Gant up in the ninth. Finished 11th last week in Canadegua. Well, you can see it immediately when Gant throws the ball, and he's shaking his head because he knew he made a bad shot in the prior frame. But you can tell off his hand whether it's going to be good or not. Gant still with a possible 222. Right now, Mike Albee with spare strike. Strike, spare, strike. He would shoot 217. So, uh... Mike can throw a couple of strikes, get a decent count, he can shut out John Gant. Picks out the 10, a uh, little loft on the ball, delayed the roll, and on the back end comes Storman back, and he in charge by 15. The power strike from Mike Alby, the ball touches the five pin, sends it to the right. And a nice reaction. He's thinking, okay, one more, one more strike here. This match is mine. He'll take care of that count ball later. Just a matter of keeping his form, Phil. Been there many times. Not over. John Gant will have the opportunity. All these strikes. Spares and then strikes is 217. John Gant contemplating what still might be. Take a look at the uh, decorative spare ball of <laughs> Mike Albee. Going for that seven pin, able to make it. Oh, he looks, he looks back like, hey, I had it all the way. Wow, and uh, that just barely hung on. If that, if, come on, ball, I can do it. Yeah, we're in Michigan here. It looks like kind of like a Wolverine's helmet. <laughs> and that'll be plenty. That gives Mike Albee 216. Forces John Gant to get two strikes in the 10th frame and then five pins. John Gant strung four in a row midway through this game. Looks good. So Marshall, once again, one more here. One more shot, just like the last one. John Gant, the opportunity to go to the next match against Steve Hoskins. That's high. It just, you know, it's, it's so easily seen from, from the delivery of John Gant 
Maybe he rushed himself a little bit on that shot. The ball was right off his hand, and Mike Albee, I'll say it now, fortunate to uh, get into the next match. You caught that right off his hand? Well, the, for some reason, it's very easy to see John Gant's delivery and watch his motion. You can tell when it's going to be a good shot or not. Mike Albee, 216 to 210 over John Gant in the opening match of the Greater Detroit Open. Now, it will be Albee taking on flamboyant Steve Hoskins. And we're back here in Taylor, Michigan. What an exciting opening round match. How about it, fans, huh? Oh, yeah. Ah, moving on, Mike Albee taking on Steve Hoskins. Marshall, um, very exciting. Well, it was a great first match. And you know what really came down to was the opportunity for John Gant to strike the second ball in the 10th and just threw a bit of an errant shot. Didn't get the job done, unfortunate for John Gant, but uh, fortuitous for Mike Albee. You know, we were able to go back in the scrapbook, the PBA scrapbook, a few years back, 1977, I believe, and I, I noticed Marshall Holman and also with our tournament leader. This was in a Pro-Am event, I believe, in 1977 in, in Connecticut. You're with our tournament leader, who's grown up just a bit, uh, Dave Watka. Dave Watka, yeah, he's, uh, he's not belt high anymore, and... Dave Watka with me to my right, and Dave, I think last night when you, you threw those shots in the in the 10th frame, the, the, the first two shots that shut out uh, Johnny Petragli gave you the lead, I think you really grew up a lot on those two shots. I think so. Uh, I, I feel personally that those are probably the two best shots I've ever thrown in my life, and uh, you know, hopefully I can go out and do it again today and repeat that, but for now those are definitely the best ones I've ever thrown. All right, you've been in this situation a couple times before, bowling for titles have come up short. You know, it's been, it's been a number of years, you've been on tour, you've been a quality player. Are you feeling confident right now? Yeah, third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. All right, Phil, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall, and Dave Watka, our tournament leader. This match, Steve Hoskins. Fiery Steve Hoskins taking on Mike Albee, and Hoskins has won the nine national championships, 11 regional titles. First shot of match two as Albee won the opening match over another left-hander, John Gant. And he can twist it up, Hoskins. Ooh, and almost the swishing 7-10 for Steve Hoskins. Ball's gonna come back, it's gonna hit a little light in the pocket. Five pin goes behind the seven, and the ten pin falls as Hoskins stares the pins down. Just dares him. I dare you to live a seven ten. I dare you. <laughs> Heart straight for the seven pin. Now Mike Albee steps up. 290 high game this week, just a 177 for his low game. He couldn't shoot many low games this week and make it to the top five. Oh, the scores were, were very, very high. Speaking of high. See Mike, Mike Albee from profile, the push away that goes up and then a little more than shoulder-high backswing. Very deliberate, as you can see, as you said earlier, Phil. Stops about seven, eight inches short of the foul line. Switches to a spare ball. Picks it up in the first frame. When you talk about being that far from the foul line, it, it's just the type of game that uh, uh, an individual player has, right? If you want to... Well, you know, as long as, as, long as, you, as you do the same things over and over and over and repeat your shots, then you're going to be fine. You know, if, if Mike all of a sudden starts sliding, you know, two inches away from the foul line, one shot, and, eight, mm -hmm. and 12 inches away the next time, you're going to have some problems. A little high, and able to kick them both out, strike in the second frame. Interesting match, very much like the last one. We see Mike Albee, the six and the eight are going to be standing, but not for very long. Albee the stroker. Steve Hoskins, a power player. Now, Hoskins came in a little bit light. Will he make an adjustment now, or...? Well, no, he'll, there'll be no adjustment made on 40. His first shot on this lane. He's well-practiced, should know what to do. Yeah. 
Ball going a little longer today than, than uh, yesterday as I was watching the players. Ball's not making its break into the pocket until, oh, three or four feet further down the lane. And the lanes will evolve and change as we go with the, with the oil being carried down. Right. Hoskins ambushed the pins last night, the last four games, 278, 279, 246, and 300. Came from well off the pace to make the top five. He picks up the spare, and Hoskins uh, one of 13 300 games this week. In fact, average to make uh, match play 231, the top 24, and to make the finals 238 tonight, a one-pin advantage for Mike Alby. And Hoskins, no... Uh, no stranger to shooting 300. He bowled a 300 game in Rochester in the televised matches. 1997, 300 game for Steve Hoskins. Hoskins up now in the third frame. Couple of spares. <laughs> Little Light sends it over and kicks out the 10 bin. This time it works. Hoskins, a very, very confident player. Ball comes in light, head pinned to the sideboard, bang, 10 pins gone. Ah, uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? You know, I go ahead all the way. <laughs> Nonchalant. Albie working on a strike. <laughs> Boy, he is so smooth, Marshall. It appears that he goes through a checklist. Well, he does. He does go through a little bit of a checklist when he when he gets the ball in his hand. He wants to make sure everything is just right. A little more of a meticulous player than, let's say, like a John Gant who, who just gets up and just, you know, gets rid of the ball. But, uh, my gosh, holby has got 26 titles. He's won uh, all the majors. Uh, done everything you can possibly do in the game. You can't argue too much for what the man has done. Well, seven pin. Surprise, Mike. Thought he was going to strike there. Ball came in pretty deep into the pocket. He'll switch balls again. Steve Hoskins uses his, uses his strike ball to shoot his fairs, just throws it hard and straight. Mike Albee doesn't throw the balls hard. Make sure he does switch balls. He barely made the seven pin uh, last time he left it. Makes a little bit of an adjustment, and no problem this time around. Mike Albee, early on here in match two, as the early lead. Back in Taylor, Michigan, the Greater Detroit Open. Right now, Mike Aldi with a 10 pin lead. And there's the co proprietors, William and Adeline DiBiase, great friends to professional bowling. Always nice to come back and see them. Boy, 15th year here at Taylor Lanes. P. Weber won the first event back in 1985. Defending champion Parker Bone placed 15th this week after winning last week in Canandaigua. Hoskins now up in the fourth, working on a strike. That's ties up the match right there. Hoskins and Albee all even. After four frames, and Hoskins got the hammer up. Hoskins and Albee. Second match. Looks as if Hoskins has slowed his speed down just a little bit. He's coming in light. This gives the ball a chance to hook. The slices that four pin forward. Well, we have Rick Benoit joining us, but Mike Albee's ball rep. And uh, Rick, Mike got through the first game. He's going to have to start striking now to catch up with Steve Hoskins. Yes, Marshall, it sure is. Both these guys are expecting to strike a lot more than they did that first match. Mike's got both lanes pretty much the same. He's just trying to clean up his release on the bottom. He doesn't want to grab it at the bottom. So both lanes are pretty much the same. Well, that release looked awfully clean. Strike here, he could tie the match up. And these are a couple of tour veterans. They know they know what they want to do. They know what they expect out of themselves. I'll be blowing in the uh, thumb hole. 
positions that hand to, so it just feels right. Well, Rick, he's going to be switching. What's what's the, what's the deal with this with this ball, the spare ball? <laughs> what do you think about that? Doesn't it look good going down the lane? Mm, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Long as it feels good. <laughs> I certainly don't want to miss an opportunity here. Like I said, this is a different mindset. These guys know going up there knowing they have to strike to win. I mean, these scores were high all week. They're going up there thinking 300 from the first shot. They're not going up there just hoping to make good shots. Ball reaction's no problem. They just want to strike. Hoskins working on uh, three baggers, three in a row. Twisting it up. Uh, when he starts feeling it, it's danger time for his opposition. Hoskins with four strikes in a row, and certainly that delivery right there, the cleanest one of the entire game. Watch this nice high flush, 10 in the pit, and the confident reaction of Steve Hoskins. Yeah, there's not time to get too excited right now. He, he knows he's in control. He get excited later. Well, Hoskins said he was not the most consistent player out here, but when the lanes are conducive to his game, look out right now. That's, that is absolutely true. When he gets his chances, it's very tough. Something distracted Hoskins. Did the right thing too, uh, Phil. You know, when, when you're distracted, put the ball down and start over again. And that's hard to do. Well, you know, it, it's important. It's important to go through your pre-shot routine again. I believe somebody may have sneezed. to raise the lead to 30. Oh my, two, four, eight, ten. Looking over at the large scoreboard. Ball is not gonna make it back up to the pocket. Makes a hard charge late. Comes in light. Could have knocked out that 10. And this, and this is a spare as you see the reaction. Oh. You want to hook the ball past the two pin, just barely touching the two pin. You can make this. Hoskins will go for it. That yeah, didn't get far enough to the left. Hoskins opens the door up for Mike Albee. Right now, that lead, it's down to four pins. Albee now up in the seventh frame. Trails by just four pins here in the second match of the Greater Detroit Open. Yeah, Rick, he's having problems with the seven pin, not quite getting the ball up to the pocket. The, the lanes are playing a little bit different. The back ends are a little cleaner. There's plenty of oil on the front. It's actually going further down the lane, and it's a little, a little jerkier on the back end than what it was at the end of the week. Gets out the test pattern ball. Uh-oh. Oh, boy, it's not good. You can see it just slip to the left, off his hand. That's, you know, it's... It, Unbelievable. You, you get a good break from Hoskins, and then you would expect Albie not to throw it away, and, and yet he did in the seventh frame, but not all lost. Albie now in the eighth frame, trails by 16, two-time PBA Player of the Year. Well, there, now he doesn't have to shoot that pesky seven pin. <laughs> Well, you don't see Mike Albee miss many single pin spares. No, you, no, you don't. It's, uh, it's unusual. But that's why they make you shoot at him, because it's not a gimme. Plus 16, coming off the open frame. Brings it back. Oh, beautiful shot in the eighth frame. And speaking of gimmies, uh, this morning, Steve Hoskins Bright and early. Look at that swing. Well, you know, I've had a chance to play a little golf with Steve. He's a good a good player and, uh, you know, generally a, a pretty good putter, but... Uh, what happened? Yeah, he's not showing his best oh. stroke. Well, they just burned it on the left-hand <laughs> side. Then he has to drive. <laughs> he missed that 25-cent skin. Yeah, he had a good time today. <laughs> Seconds after the opening round, dropped to fourth, but uh, really was 11th 
In fact, he was 11th with four games to go. Came in light last time with this lane. Slower speed. Oh, did everything he wanted to except knock the 10 pin down. He's proud of himself. You can see it in his face. He liked the way the ball came off his hand. Watch the six pin. Second from the right. It's going to go around the bottom of the 10 pin. Our friend, the ringing 10. We've seen that lots of times on the Pro Bowlers Tour. Working on that 10 pin in the ninth frame for Hoskins. Up by 16. Doesn't switch balls. Hard and straight. He makes the corner pin. Keeps that 16 pin lead. Mike Alby working on a strike in the eighth frame. If he strikes out, he can shut Steve Hoskins out. 227 for Alby if he strikes out. Hoskins can do no better than 223. He's trying to knock out that seven pin. Does at that time, cuts the lead to six. Marshall, the score is very high this week, and now certainly lower. Yeah, every day every day is different. You know, they, they do the lanes the same, but but the lanes don't always react the same as Albie doesn't, li doesn't like the way lane 39 was set, so he he takes a re-rack. That's his first of this game. You're allowed to. Albie just uh, $36,000 and some change behind that $2 million career earnings mark. He'll be there soon. A little bit sooner than you. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and a solid seven pin the same kind of hit that Hoskins left the ringing ten this is the ringing seven you'll watch the four pin go around the bottom of the seven pin and now all he has to regroup himself and make this he's come close to missing it once he has missed it the last time he shot at it and needs to make this to force Hoskins to do anything in the 10th frame. He does. He makes Hoskins get up and mark. But Hoskins. you know, for, for Steve, excuse me, Phil, for Steve, he's finishing on his good lane. I, I really do like his chances of, of making a quality shot and coming through winning this match. All be possible 206. The great champion, Mike Gallwood, who's won 26 national titles a member of the PBA Hall of Fame and finishes out 206 that open though on the seventh missing that seven pin spare and especially coming right after Hoskins has thrown it open now we'll sit and watch once again on his good lane needs a mark to win a little more loft Steve Hoskins Shuts the door, just needs four pins on two balls to knock down Albi. High flush in the pocket, and interesting, the ball went off his hand a little bit higher. There's a little of that fire reaction from Steve Hoskins. Gosh, Phil, you could get four pins and two balls, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't you? <laughs> Hoskins, uh, looking for that magical number, I think, of ten national titles, you really have a good shot of making it to the Hall of Fame should you win ten. Oh, yeah. Feel pretty much a lock. He still has a long way to go. That's a strike, a double in the 10th frame. Hoskins wins match two. However, I'll be not uh, finished for the night. He'll join my partner, Marshall Holman, for the tip of the week coming up. And we're back, Taylor, Michigan. Steve Hoskins will face Johnny Petraglia. Hoskins 222 to 206 winner over Mike Albee. Time now for our score more with Brunswick Tip. My partner Marshall Holman along with Mike Albee. One key to becoming a better bowler is being able to adapt your ball speed to be more effective on varying lane conditions. So how is that achieved? Well, we brought in PBA Hall of Famer Mike Albee. Mike, good to have you with us. Thank you, Marshall. Now, Mike, what's your technique? Well, one thing bowlers don't realize is that they can change their ball speed simply by changing the position of their ball in their stance. Here's a couple of examples. On an oily lane condition where you need less ball speed, you want to start with a ball around waist high or below in your stance. This will create a shorter backswing and give you less ball speed so the ball will have a chance to react to the lane condition. On a lane condition where the lane's hook bore, you need to create more ball speed. 
you can achieve this by raising the ball in your stance. This will give you a longer backswing and create more ball speed. The most important ingredient of these two examples is to allow the weight of the ball to control your arm swing. This will allow you to be consistent and to adjust your ball speeds to the varying lane conditions. So take a tip from Mike Alby and work on changing your ball speed. You'll realize you have more options for finding the pocket. And thanks again, Mike. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall and Mike Alby. Let's take a look at some other finishers. All right, Phil, and just barely missing the top 24, Mike Miller, the no-thumb release, the power player, came short 42 pins. Ryan Goble, TSC champion last year, starting to get back into form, finishes in 10th place. Ryan Voss, the great Ryan Voss, looked like he was going to make a run, he came up a little bit short. Parker Bowl the third, odds-on favorite for player of the year this year, having another good week. And Mark Mosabi, the AC Delco champion, won his first tournament just a few weeks ago in Virginia Beach. Finishing in 22nd place, powerful Robert Smith. All right, we'll be back with our next match, Steve Hoskins taking on Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia. So Steve Hoskins from Tarvin Springs, Florida, taking on Johnny Petraglia out of Manalapan, New Jersey, here in the semifinal match of the Greater Detroit Open. Petraglia, quite a story. 14 national titles, several senior championships at the age of 52, still bowls very well. It's really amazing. He's retooled his game and very competitive. Not, it helps to have a break. Well, I tell you, it helped to have a break early in the match. You know, I don't care how many times you've been there. You're always a little nervous at the start of a match. And something like this for Johnny Petragli can do nothing but loosen him up. kicks out that 10 pin. Uh, you saw a 240 plus average this week. Johnny Petraglia led right uh, until that final game last night. He did, and, and uh, I just I can't say enough about the way this man has, has really gone through so many different changes in the game. That's you know longevity in, in any sport is amazing, and in bowling the way that tra the transitions have gone, with the different kind of equipment, the different releases, uh, it's really quite a tribute for for anybody to stick around that long. Hoskins and Petraglia both strike in the first frame. Now we talked about Petraglia being loosened up by that fortunate strike in the first frame. What loosened up this man winning the last match against Mike Alby. He's your favorite. Petraglia, second frame. Holds him apart, senior rookie of the year last year. The last three or four tournaments, I mean, he has bowled an awful lot of games. Knocks the ball raced in from the left-hand side, coming right, knocks the five pin into the 10. The reaction of the veteran for Traga. Marshall, you talk about bowling a lot of games. It's different bowling, just practice, and competitive bowling. Oh, without a doubt. The competitive bowling puts so much more stress on you. Smooth release. Oh, you got to love that, Johnny. And, you know, I just, I marvel at this. Like, you know, I came out on tour in 1974, and, and I thought Johnny was old then. You know, and, and now, here it is, 1999, and, and I think Johnny and I are about, we're about the same age now. I caught him. Three in a row for Petraglia. The first two for Hoskins. Now we expected strikes. Boy, Hoskins loves that right lane. Nothing but strikes. A profile look at Steve Hoskins. Starts the ball low. Very deliberate with his steps. Good push away. High backswing. Good knee bending. Boy, he really, he catches it. As they say, he catches it all. And the results? Bang. Perfection. Deep breath. Stepping up on the approach in the fourth. This match all even. 
the lane that gave him a little more trouble in the first first game. Not much trouble right now, Phil. Has he made an adjustment? Well, he's certainly made an adjustment. He's gotten himself to where he controls his speed better on lane 39. Watch as he's focusing on watching that ball as it goes all the way down. Will it kick the 10 out? The answer was yes. Another strike, Johnny Petraglia, and he's running him out. He's got the first four. And his historic 100-point night against the Knicks isn't matched by most NBA teams these days. And Petraglia throws another one. Watch as these two great athletes are honored on Friday night, the 50 greatest athletes, sports century. Two great athletes. Johnny Petraglia, he is getting into it. He's down on his knees. Oh, baby. He's tossed a 300 on TV before. He did it in 19... 94 and this gentleman right here 1997 so uh, they both had perfect games on television and they're both working on perfect games right now that's five in a row both hoskins and patraglia the first five johnny's got to be wondering that's, well, what do you have to do to get a lead in this game i got all strikes hoskins could say the same Hoskins with a couple of PBA majors to his credit, the 97 and 99 Bayer Brunswick Turing Players Championship. He is locked in. And a fortuitous kick, 10 pin into the into the sideboards, watches the 6'10", will just barely go and knock it out. Oh, he's got to love it. He's not sure right now. Oh, thanks. Petraglia now trying to match Hoskins strike for strike. Sixth frame. Stuck a little at the line. And it's the bucket. Oh, six pins for Johnny Petraglia. Now let's take a look at a Dexter footwork of the pros. Now Johnny likes to slide, so he uses the number seven heel and the number eight sole. Uses medium hand and a lot of weight back on his heel when he throws the ball. He goes to make the spare, crosses over, gets it done, and that's this week's Dexter footwork of the pros. Johnny Petragli is going to have to get things going here. In the seventh frame, he's missed once, and already he's 14 pins down. Both players have... Bold six frames. 14 pin advantage for Hoskins. All right, what a dry spell. <laughs> right back in the pocket. Hoskins now has the first six. Should I say it? Up on his good lane, 300, possible, a little extra money. Yeah, right, I, think, I said it. I think after this this long, you could uh, mention it, especially going up on what I consider the lane he can't miss. $10,000 extra check, courtesy of the PBA, for a 300 game. Now, to my knowledge, nobody has ever bowled two perfect games on national television. He really has this lane wired. Well, he'd like to take lane 40 home with him. Although 39 hasn't been so bad either, Phil. <laughs> Hoskins, the first seven, leads by 24. And Johnny Petragli is bowled uh, superb through seven frames. Petragli hoping for some kind of an opening. Uh-oh, look at that. Boy, he's got some room to the right. Oh, my. The first eight. That ball went way wide, but uh, big hand, lots of roll. Hoskins, uh, front eight. He can't believe it himself. 
Bragley still with a 276 possibility. Well, now Hoskins perhaps thinking that he has the match and now we'll worry about the 300? Or is it too early? Well, he, st he still has to be aware of, uh, of just getting the match won. Petraglia takes care of the spare. Not for Johnny Petraglia right now. 256, the best he can do. Steve Hoskins working on a 269 pace if he were to nine count spare strike out. Johnny, excuse me, Johnny teamed up earlier this year to win with Jason Hurt, great young player on tour, the National Bowling Stadium, National Senior Doubles in Reno. Well, we've had 14 perfect games on television. No player has achieved that feat twice. Hoskins has a chance to go into the record books again. Uh-oh. Hey, Hank on. And for Johnny Petragli, you know, he hasn't won a singles event on the national tour since 1980. So uh, disappointment as it looks like he's going to finish no better than third this week. But still a great week for Johnny Petragli. And, uh, Steve Hoskins now trying to go for a little more history. Now, in league play, we don't fill in the score. We got all those strikes. <laughs> yeah! That was left. Left off his hand, caught a little extra oil. The ball did not carry back up to the pocket. It's nine pins for Steve Hoskins. Disappointment, but... Uh, Still feeling good about winning this match, and he certainly should do that. The pl player on top is Dave Wadka, looking for his first title. Ball comes close, Phil. Comes back into the pocket. As I said, the ball was a little bit left off his hand. Lots of oil in the middle of the lane. No problem with the spare, and boy, he'd like to have that one back, because that's the lane that he really was, was lined in on. Even better than lane 39. Looking over the scoreboard, he just needs a decent count here on the first ball. 229 through eight. Four pins to win it. Nice position to be in. Well, what a great television record Steve Hoskins has. Just the 10 pin, but that's enough, and Hoskins will move on and face Dave Watka in the championship match. You had mentioned his TV record, 33 and 17 now. So, 33 and 17 for Hoskins. Needs another victory to wrap up the Greater Detroit Open. We'll have that in a minute. And we're back here at Taylor, Michigan. Next three stops here on the Pro Bowlers Tour on ESPN, the Bay City Classic, Bay Lanes. Johnny Mazza's place, 9.30 Eastern Time, November 3rd. Then the Indianapolis Open. We'll be at Woodland Bowl, another 9.30 start, November 10th. And then the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions, Overland Park, Kansas. Start time, Wednesday, November 17th at 7.30. We'll be back for the championship match. Steve Hoskins taking on Dave Watka, walking, looking for his very first title. And the third match, 268 to 245. Steve Hoskins over Johnny Petraglia. Now let's send it down. Oh, we got a couple of Hall of Famers down there. Marshall? All right, thank you very much, Phil, with Johnny Petraglia. And Johnny, it just seems like Hoskins got the best of you. Both bowled great games. You shot 245, but it's going to be no better than third. Well, yeah, I could see Steve getting lined up at the end of uh, the match against Mike. And, uh, uh, you know, Steve, when he gets lined up, usually doesn't make a mistake. I felt like if I could bowl 300, I had a lock time. <laughs> and uh, that was that was my whole goal there. And um, uh, I knew the bucket uh, was really going to cost me because even if he left something, I thought the three pins would, would end up costing me at the end. And uh, I must have got quick. I, it came off my hand pretty good. I must have thrown it pretty hard. Well, Johnny, you bowled you bowled great on the senior tour. You're still bowling great on the on the, on the national tour. I think it's a, it really is a tribute to... Uh, to your work ethic and uh, you know really staying on top of the game well thanks marshall i appreciate that i, I practiced a lot especially in the month of september uh, getting ready for the senior swing and um 
and it's carried over to here. I was lucky. I was tournament sharp coming into here and, and, and hit a really nice lane condition that matched up to my game real well and just got lucky to take advantage of it. It's great being here. It's great being with the young guys. Right. Well, Johnny, I'm sure we'll see you again here with the young guys, and thank you very much. Phil, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, talking about the senior tour, tomorrow the Brunswick Zone Senior National Championship on ESPN2 at Air Force Lanes in Jackson. That's a 2 Eastern start. Tournament summary, Albee defeated Gant 216 to 210. Hoskins then got by Mike Albee in match two. And then, uh, boy, Hoskins putting a lot of strikes. In fact, Johnny Petraglia throwing a lot of strikes, just not enough, 268 to 245. So red hot, Steve Hoskins taking on Dave Watka here in the championship match of the Greater Detroit Open. Hoskins looking for his 10th PBA Tour victory, certainly a milestone, and Watka wants to get that first tournament victory, which means a, a spot in the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions in a couple of weeks. Hoskins with just the eight pin standing and certainly could have been worse. The two, the four, and the five crumbled out. Won't be 300 for Hoskins this game either as this ball comes in very light and really happy just to see the eight pin standing. He might hook at this. He does. Brings it back, so it's fair to start off the championship match for Steve Hoskins. Now, Dave Wadka, a guy that you say, hey, he should win. If not tonight, should win very soon. A guy who you would have thought would have won earlier in his career, going to throw the ball straighter than Hoskins. Boy, smooth stroke. Well, he's got a beautiful game. He really does. And then, uh, you know, I don't know if you'll say that maybe he's underachieved in his, in his first uh, 10 years on tour. Watch the ball come in strong. Power strike knocks them all down. Keeps nice. himself fit. Yeah. Nice way to start. Uh, yeah, def definitely stays in very good shape. Now that ball surface. Allow the ball to go down a little bit before hooking. No, made it go down a little too far that time. The ball comes in light, leaves the two and the eight. Take a look at the Dobbins, Ted and Leona, the other co-proprietors here at Taylor Lanes. What a great week once again, coming here for 15 years. The pros, difficult spare. Look out. No problem. Takes care of the two and the eight. And really, a couple of milestones you said earlier. The, the tenth title, double figures. Something that Steve Hoskins won so desperately, and that first title for Dave Wadka. Hoskins up in the second frame after opening up with the spare. Ten pins for Hoskin. Johnny's got to be saying, why didn't he do that for me? Yeah, right. Last <laughs> night, the last game of match play, as we see the ball coming, just a little light. The six is going to lay in the channel. Doesn't quite get out. Lisa, Steve's wife, called up uh, Billy Yinger, Steve's ball rep, and uh, wanted to know how he was doing. He was in the middle of shooting 300. Lisa stayed on to the very end. <laughs> Picks oh, it up. Just barely touches it. Hoskins, couple of spares. This is just, he, the air knocked this down. Just knocked it, just touched it. No big deal. Safe. Steve's children, uh, Lindsay and Ryan, I'm sure they're back in Florida watching Daddy Bull right now and all excited. Still another 10 pin for Hoskins. Well, if Dave Watka wins tonight, he will be the seventh player to win his first title 
this year. Now, last year, no first-time winners on the PBA Tour. The last time there were seven new champions on the PBA Tour in 1993, Steve Hoskins included in that group in 93. Makes the 10 pin once again, finds himself two pins down to Dave Wadka. Hoskins wondering why the ball won't carry, and I think Wadka's pretty well knows what happened to his last shot. He just made a bad shot and left it 2-8. Struck in the first frame on lane 40. Ring and 10. Lead down to one pin, and all of a sudden, that strike fest has uh, taken a sabbatical. Dave and his wife, Laura, expecting their first child in about seven weeks, and he goes to an unusual looking ball. Another spare ball, Polly Esther should hook, picks it up. Wadka now up in the fourth frame. That's a solid shot for Dave Wadka, second strike of the game. Keeps that lead at one pin. Steve Hoskins looking for his first strike after uh, last game when he threw eight strikes in a row to start the game out. Well, he's still been in the pocket, just not able to carry a couple of corner pins. Got to be saying, well, that looks familiar. Doesn't look good, but it looks familiar. Hoskins trails by two here in the fourth frame. The lanes change so much quicker to today's game than they did even just a few years ago when I was still bowling full time on tour. Constantly have to be making adjustments. Picks up the 10-pin spare, Hoskins, the PBA Rookie of the Year back in 1989. And, and you know, I talk about Lisa's wife. Pretty, pretty solid performer. Uh, Monday Night League, congratulations, Lisa. 809, four games. She averages about 180. I'm impressed. Yeah, well, I'm not going to take her on. Yeah. <laughs> so two-pin advantage, but Wadka working on a strike now. In that fourth frame, Hoskins up in the fifth. Takes all the approach. First strike for Steve Hoskins. This game didn't come until the fifth frame. This is a little more like what he's been trying to get, to get accomplished. Well, Marshall, you certainly know got to think back a few years when you won your first title. But for Wadka right now, oh, there's no greater thrill in the game. That needs to hook hard. Two, four, eight, ten. That ball off to the right. Let's take another look at a Dexter footwork of the pros. Dave Wadka, he has early timing, and he prefers to use the number two heel and the number four sole to control the length of his stride. The heel stops him and allows his hand to do the work, but his hand didn't do quite enough work on this last shot. He's going for it. It'll be just eight out. He's going to have to regroup right now. That's another Dexter footwork of the pros for Dave Wadka finding himself 12 pins in the rears. Came close, but uh, just hooked by it a little bit. Talk about Dave's wife, pretty good bowler. Dave's mom, Kathy, a lady pro. She won a title. Also a WIBC championship back in 1979. Comes from a bowling family, and Dave right now needs to get going. Strips out the four pin, takes care of that work, and for Dave Wadka, it's a 12 pin deficit. Steve Hoskins with his first strike in the fifth frame, and we'll be right back after this. Back here in Taylor, Michigan, Taylor Lanes, Steve Hoskins, battling Dave Wadka. First time in 99. These gentlemen won their first titles, and uh, now in the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions, uh, Rick Lawrence swept through the field to do it. 
some great young players. Well, I like the look of that. It's good to have fresh new blood, and the TSC is going to be a lot of fun this year. Hoskins up by 12 in the sixth frame. You'll see some emotion if this ball strikes. Distancing that lead. Wasn't so sure about that eight pin, but uh, a little bit high in the pocket. Well, the ball is going to drive a little past the eight pin. Didn't get quite as excited as I thought it would have, Phil. I think probably because he was concerned about that eight pin. Hoskins now a double up by 22. Really making his mark as a, one of the great clutch performers on tour with that great television record. <laughs> Solid 10 on a shot that Hoskins thought was definitely going to strike. You'll look at the six pin. Second from the right, around the bottom, and Steve has some friends up here from Toledo, and his buddy jumped up in the air. He thought that was a strike. And <laughs> I think he was more disappointed than Hoskins was. Now Spears, very crucial at this point, picks it up in the seventh frame. So now Dave Watka working on a strike, but down in this title match by 21. Well, now's the time when Watka has to show what he's made of. This is the opportunity. With a couple of strikes in the seventh and eighth frame, you can cut that deficit down to one pin and put all the pressure back on Hoskins. Better release. Beautiful shot. He has all the talent. It's just a matter of, of allowing his mind to make the good shot. Dave, uh, an avid Yankee fan, last night caught the end of the game. Oh, he was hooting and hollering, and uh, certainly bowling a sport where strikes are good. Well, I'm glad somebody was happy last night. And he threw plenty of them this week. Dave Watka averaging blistering 240-plus uh, this week to take the lead. And I don't know if something distracted Dave or if that was uh, maybe just his hand just didn't feel solid in the ball. Such an important shot. Doesn't want to throw it without being ready. Took the lead in the very last game last night. Hang on. <laughs> Cut it to one. Boy, Dave, that's, that's Dave, a critical shot for Watka, isn't it? It's a huge shot for Dave Watka. And the pressure is right back on Steve Hoskins. This ball held the pocket. It didn't hook towards the end. He did get a shot clock, shot clock violation, but, uh, you know, I don't think he cares. He wanted to take the time. He wanted to make the shot the proper one. Watka well, been there before as the top seed lost. Fired a 191 game and lost in Portland a couple of years ago. Hoskins comes right back with a strike. And that was an important shot for Hoskins. Right now, if Hoskins, if Hoskins strikes out and Watka strikes out, Steve Hoskins wins by one pin, so uh, to keep his destiny in his own hands, he needs to strike here in the ninth frame. Hoskins taking a little extra time up in the ninth frame. Boy, that uh, split where Wadka only got two could loom very large toward the end of this match. He lost a lot of count. Another solid 10 for Steve Hoskins. Boy, maybe this is Dave Watkins' tournament to have. Things are starting to go his way late in the game. Well, with Watkins, really, really impressed me as we take a look at this shot. There goes the sixth pin again, and the reaction from Steve Hoskins, disbelief. What's really impressed me with Watkins after that open in the fifth frame, a little bit lost, comes right back with three in a row. Picks it up. That's the fifth time that Steve Hoskins has had to make the 10-pin in the title match. And right now, a one-pin deficit could go to a nine-pin lead for Dave Wadka. 
There you see it, up in the ninth frame, Watka down by one. I know he wants to get excited. He wants to run it out, but he, he's got another, another couple of shots to throw. Nine pin lead. If he spares in this frame, he'll force Hoskins to strike out to win. If he were to strike here, that would put him at a 220 pace. This shot right here for the win. For the win, it's, it's left off his hand. And it gives an opening to Steve Hoskins. And that's kind of Dave Watka's M.O. When he needs a shot, kind of a la Dick Weber of years back, he goes with a high, hard one. Little left off his hand, more speed. Try to hang in there and get the pocket. He's telling that ball to push. Go down the lane longer. Ooh, it's a forfeit. Possible 214 for Watka. Should he spare and strike? Gets the spare, but Steve Hoskins can come up and win it. Still important to get good count. If, if uh, Watka strikes here for 214, Hoskins would need two strikes and nine for the win. Not as high a scoring match as we anticipated, but certainly every bit as exciting as you could want. Meredith to get a good count. Beautiful roll and a strike for Dave Watka for a 2-14. Now has to watch as Hoskins has a chance to win it. Hoskins has left five 10 pins this game. He's only struck three times. Two strikes and nine for the title. First one. And no emotion from Hoskins on that one. Boy, Watkins fought so very hard to win that first title. Hoskins seems to strike a nine pins to win. I remember another very good player in P. McCordick a long, long time before he got his first win and able to win a couple after that. But you want to get that monkey off your back. And right now that monkey is Hoskins. 12 years as a touring pro for Steve Hoskins. Going for his 10th title. <laughs> 10 pin! Un oh my! Unbelievable. Made a great shot, wasn't able to get it done, and it's going to be that man right there. Dave Watka, congratulations. Watka wins his first. PBA title. He's in the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions. And your winner, Dave Watka. Oh, an exciting championship match, 214 to 206. Now let's send it up to my partner, Marshall Holman. Well, now let's take a look back at today's key moment, the Ginkoba moment of concentration. It's Steve Hoskins in the 10th frame, the second shot in the 10th, he musters up all the concentration to make the great shot. He needs a strike for his opportunity to win. Wasn't able to get it done, but 10-pin stands. Steve Hoskins doesn't do it, but he has the concentration, and that's today's Ginkoba moment of concentration. Think better. Think Ginkoba. Phil, back to you. All right, thanks a lot. And, Dave, last night you told me what bothers you the most. People keep telling you, why haven't you won yet? You won now. Yeah, they can't say that anymore. All right. For First of all, I'd like to thank the DiBiases and everybody here at Taylor Lanes. You guys put on the greatest show in the world, and I couldn't think of a better place to win my first title. Congratulations. You're off to the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions. Yeah, Lori, pack your bags. We're going to Kansas City. <laughs> it's off to Kansas City. Congratulations to Dave Watka, the winner of the Greater Detroit Open. Once again, congratulations to Dave, the winner of the 99 Greater Detroit Open. Be sure to join us next Wednesday for Bowling by the Bay as the PBA Tour returns to Bay City, Michigan for the Bay City Classic. Stay tuned to ESPN for MLS action, Chicago Fire versus Dallas Burn, coming up next.